News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk, KGVO, AM 1290, and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. An arrest has been made in the savage beating of a daycare worker in Ronan. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It's Wednesday, October 14th, 2015. Skies mostly clear. It's 42 degrees in Missoula. Our newscast this morning is sponsored by Kootenai Creek Village, the maintenance-free active adult community in Stevensville, where they offer the best of Western Montana living. Call 777-5387. The Lake County Sheriff's Department has been working on a case since last week when a daycare owner in Ronan was beaten by two people while she was trying to protect a child in her care. Lake County Sheriff Don Bell spoke with our John King yesterday and explained what his department has pieced together so far. The owner of the daycare recognized that the male was intoxicated or had been drinking alcohol and started escorting him out. Fight ensued. Uh, At some point, he struck her with his fist. The girlfriend ran up and struck the victim with a shovel. She had some pretty severe injuries. The male suspect, Francis Jackson, has now been arrested largely because of the efforts of a detective that used to work for the CSKT Tribal Police. Through investigation and tips from assistance from a former law enforcement agent here that used to work for the tribe, a gentleman officer named Arnon Ald, they used to work for the tribal police here, worked for the Kalispell Police in Washington, at Usk, Washington, got a tip where that mail might be, got a search warrant, executed that warrant, and he, Mr. Jackson was arrested. The girlfriend that used the shovel in the beating still has not been found. She's still at large. The couple have been charged with simple assault, assault with a weapon, aggravated burglary, and custodial interference. Bell said there may be char- more charges once Jackson is returned to Montana. A Montana State University official says two people are being questioned after a 36-year-old student was found with his throat cut in the Student Union building. Tracy Ellig says a man and a woman are in custody but have not been charged in Tuesday's stabbing. Ellig said the unnamed student was stabbed in the school's graduate and family housing area west of the central campus. He made his way to the Strand Union building where medical personnel working at a blood drive spotted him with his hand over his throat. Ellick said they gave him medical assistance until an ambulance arrived. Ellick said the victim knows the suspects, but he did not have an, any additional information. 33-year-old Ben Snavely appeared in justice court via video from the county jail yesterday, charged with three felonies after allegedly beating two women, threatening them with a knife, and almost wrecking their apartment in a methamphetamine-fueled rage. Deputy Missoula County Attorney Brittany Santorno said the attack occurred at a residence on South 1st Street West on Saturday. He was high on methamphetamine when he kicked in the door of his on-again, off-again girlfriend's apartment. Once he was inside, he ransacked the entire apartment, breaking furniture, windows, and anything he could get his hands on. The officers described the inside of the house as looking like a tornado had come through. He then grabbed a knife and proceeded into his ex-girlfriend's room. He held the knife up at her head level and then threw her down on the ground multiple times and then into the closet door. His ex-girlfriend thought she was in fear for her life. Judge Murray Anderson said bail at $100,000. Snavely's next court appearance is October 23rd. A man accused of shooting his neighbor while the two were hanging out in his garage in Billings has been charged with negligent homicide. The Billings Gazette reports Jose Pedro Cobos appeared in court yesterday for the early Saturday morning death of Mark Kirby. Cobos is being held on $70,000 bail. According to charging documents, he and Kirby were drinking in Cobos' garage in the southwestern part of the city into the evening on Friday. Kirby's wife heard a loud bang early Saturday morning went across the street and found her husband lying on the ground with blood coming from the back of his neck. This week, Missoula law enforcement and mental health professionals are receiving refresher training as part of the crisis intervention team. Missoula Police Detective Ben Slater said the team is a group of community professionals working together to help defuse situations involving individuals who are experiencing mental problems that could result in criminal activity or injury. This group is learning advanced de-escalation techniques and stages of escalating crisis as part of their refresher training. In our 40-hour basic course, we instruct the basic de-escalation techniques. Slater said the goal of the training is to have a successful outcome in every crisis situation. As law enforcement, our successful end is always to have everyone walk away from a situation safely. When we look to de-escalate a crisis, we do want to help take 
that individual out of their crisis state. And the next part of CIT is being able to assist them to one of our local resources. Those involved in the training include the City Police Department, the Missoula County Sheriff's Office, and the Western Montana Mental Health Center. Wildfires burning on prairie land in five states from Wyoming to Iowa have killed pets and livestock and destroyed more than a dozen homes. The worst so far is a fire near Casper, Wyoming, that's burned almost 15 square miles of dried-out grasslands. The fire began at a landfill Saturday and spread rapidly Sunday and again Monday. A couple of hundred people remained evacuated from their homes. Yesterday, the local Red Cross is asking people to donate shovels and rakes to help victims search the remains of their homes for any valuables. Other large and destructive prairie fires have been burning in the Dakotas, here in Montana, and in Iowa. Well, speaking of that Montana fire, a little good news out of Gallatin County after the wind-blown Cottonwood Gulch fire quickly burned through 8,300 acres. Fire Information Officer Kerry O'Collin, a Connell rather, says the situation is becoming much more manageable. Well, no one has been evacuated. We've reduced the number of homes threatened down to 20. We were saying there it was about 50. Now we're down to 20, and that is reflecting it's been reduced quite a bit with some good weather, with some good work, some water, and and some, you know, elbow grease. Containment was at 15% yesterday. O'Connell predicts containment will only go up from there. We still have black coming right up close to some of the houses, um, but we're, we're continuing to go interior from that perimeter and continue to cool that down. I would say we've probably seen the worst of this fire that we're going to see. So far, only one outbuilding is burned down. O'Connell said there have been no injuries. The fire is human-caused, but not likely arson. And the three plaintiffs who filed a lawsuit seeking to block the transfer of a hydroelectric dam to the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes are dropping the case. State Senator Bob Keenan, former State Senator Verdell Jackson, and a Flathead Lake business owner were denied their requested emergency injunction two days before the transfer of the Kerr Dam back in September. The dam has been renamed the Salish Kootenai Dam. The plaintiff's legal challenge of the Federal Regulatory Commission's approval of the transfer remained an active case after the injunction was denied. Their attorney, Lawrence Kogan, yesterday filed a notice with a federal judge in Washington that they're voluntarily dropping the lawsuit. Kogan told the Associated Press he's considering filing a new version of the lawsuit at a later date. News Talk Time 612. News Talk KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Mostly sunny skies today with our highs in the upper 60s to right around 70. Mostly clear tonight. Lows will be on the cold side as we drop into the mid-30s. Breezy and cooler on Thursday. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for Missoula's KECI 13.